kind of kindness so we are going to uh, slide into that um, into that uh, amazing topic so i would request everyone to sit in a comfortably cross leg position if that is available for you if that is not available comfort sit in a place that gives you comfort gently closing your eyes if you are wearing glasses there is no need for to look anything to look inside of us there is no need for an external glasses so you are welcome to remove them gently closing your eyes relaxing your shoulders shoulder blades relaxing the top of your head relax your forehead relax your face face muscles relax your tongue relax your cheek relax your jaws relaxing your shoulders shoulder blades relaxing your hands gently on your knees or on a table wherever you are sitting relaxing your heart lungs liver kidneys pancreas intestines hormonal glands we are in a complete state of relaxation it is in this complete state of relaxation that we tap into our parasympathetic nervous system from the adrenaline pumping fight or flee mode we are entering this growth space the space of nourishment the space of surrender the space of letting go relaxing your hips relaxing your thighs hamstrings knee joints relaxing your ankle calf muscles relaxing your feet now that the physical body has come to a state of complete relaxation let's bring our focus gently inwards the instrument that we use to shift the focus is our breath before we start controlling our breath just be an audience to see how the breath enters you are you breathing at the level of your neck thoracic sorry clavicular are you breathing at the level of your heart thoracic or your deep breathing at the level of your abdominus the moment we tap into our parasympathetic nervous system we will be in a position to deep to breathe long and deep all through the session we wanted to have this long breath which fills our lungs with the air all through the exhalation we're going to let go of that air inhaling bringing in the nourishment from the outside to the inside and breathing out bringing the nourishment from the inside to the outside there is no such thing called bad thing goes out good thing comes in what is good for us we take what is good for the plant and trees we give so we are in constant state of receiving and providing pratyahara the state of focus we want our five sense organs to work for us and not the other way around we want the eyes 
to see what we want to see. We want our ears to hear what we want to hear, not the other way. We want our mouth to speak what we want to speak from the heart, not the other way. Similarly, our other sense organs. Ahimsa, non-violence, kindness is the subject that we are going to deal, that we are going to listen today. Remember, it is impossible for us to learn anything new if we think we already know the subject. Today's topic like every other day's topic, it is going to be an interpretation, an inference, in my humble opinion, with my yogic background, other options, other views are as much valid as mine. You are welcome to share. If we have the possibility of the time towards the end so entering the space of listening entering the space of inferring with an open mind and an open heart we are going to be in silence for next two minutes you have your breath to watch. Just let the breath enter your body. Feel this non-violence. Feel this ahimsa. Feel this calmness inside of you. Inhale as long as possible. And exhale as long as possible in silence. Bringing our hands in prayer position in front of our heart, if that is a possibility. Our thumbs touching our heart and the fingers radiating that love to everyone around us, including our own self. Thank yourself for being here. Thank yourself for taking time for your own benefit and the immeasurable benefit that this world will get because of a change in ourself. We begin the session by chanting one Om. You are welcome to join. Inhaling.
hands in namaskar anjali in front of our face to thank everyone around us seeing the god seeing the nature seeing the brahman seeing the soul and acknowledging it in everyone around us and we bring our hands to the level of your heart and we gently start rubbing your hands to create some warmth in your palm and bring the hands cupping your high hands on your closed eyelids so that the warmth of your hand dilates the blood vessels increasing the flow of blood to your brain to your eyes one more time or twice whichever you feel if that would be the last start blinking your eyes inside of your cupped palms and gently releasing your hands welcome welcome everyone visa uh, now i'm going to uh, continue with the conversation yeah so you are welcome to record it <laughs> thank you recording in progress super welcome everyone uh, most of you some of you know me i'm balaganesh sivaprakasam bala i come from auroville it's an international town uh, in south of india in southern part of india um, so in this international town uh, we have people from 56 nationalities around 3000 people are living here and i moved here since 4 years before that i had a corporate career for almost 10 11 years uh, in india and i was living in uh, europe a bit and then in the last few years i'm um doing yoga i teach yoga through my yoga school my yoga school is uh, 200 hours and 300 hours accredited school from yoga alliance we offer we tr- i train people to become yoga teachers um of course pandemic has changed the 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 profile um, now i am doing a lot of online classes also so if anyone will be interested you are welcome to uh, contact me and um, yeah with that information i'm going to go into this today subject it's a it's a very very basic subject when you do yoga uh, in a, in a, in a, in a traditional yogic sense we have uh, ashtanga yoga version uh, part this is not the patabi joy of ashtanga yoga that you see like it's a physical form ashtanga means eight parts eight eight there are uh, there is a, like, for example this uh, this is a, this is an answer to a question if a question is asked how to enjoy life how to have pure bliss or how to be happy so a patanjali answers you have to do eight things in your life so that you can become happy so this is an answer so on this eight steps asanas the the, the postures that you know is a part of that one pranayama is one part Uh, and then there are other meditation levels but the first level the basic level the first step that you needed to that the base it's the base of the pyramid that you needed to have is yamas and niyamas yamas or um, uh, external ethics and niyamas or internal ethics so in today we are going to talk about the first of the external ethics and in my next uh, conversation we are going to talk about the first of the ex, uh, internal ethics so my intention is to have like um uh, more sessions so that we will be in a position to grow uh, deeper into every level and then so that we will be in a position to understand the whole context of yoga yoga is not just what you do with your body what you physically can do like i can put my hands uh, i can put my um, leg behind my head is not what yoga is about it's only an asana part of it you will be in a position to do yoga not only if you are doing uh, asanas not only doing pranayama you need to have Recording the basics stopped. can you uh, slow down a little bit please okay. bella <laughs> okay. okay okay thank you a lot not a little bit a lot, a lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay the bit so uh recording in progress thank you um the so in this eight steps the first step is the um, yama part the the self restraint how you are interacting with outside world 
changes how your physical body is going to ch change itself for example today we are talking about the subject of ahimsa ahimsa seems to be what is the connection between ahimsa non violence kindness and yoga practice because it seems slowly please otherwise no one understand it seems that it is not in in line because the yoga is uh, because the yoga that we know uh, in western world because the first time i ever did yoga was in europe so i kind of understand what yoga is being taught in in some parts of the world it is neither wrong neither correct it is what it is but to have this base the ahimsa the non violence as a base then you understand the link between the what is the need for having this important um, important ethics when we are practicing yoga yeah so we are going to dwell deeper into this one uh, the first of the restraint that external ethics that you needed to develop for your own sake and for the sake of others is ahimsa uh, ahimsa is a sanskrit word uh, means ahimsa himsa means um let's say violence or uh, um, something that is not good yeah so ahimsa means the opposite of it so whatever is not himsa whatever is not violent whatever is not cruel whatever is not brutal whatever is not hurting others what becomes ahimsa that means it becomes non violence so this is an important um important step that we needed to take it's like taking a pledge for the o5 our own sake because why we needed to talk about ahimsa in a yogi context is for example i wanted to let's say i wanted to go on a crash diet i wanted to reduce weight or i wanted to have six packs so i'm going to what i'm going to go i'm going to put my body and my mind to through to through a torture so basically uh what is going to happen when i'm going to put my body and my mind through a torture through a violence through 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 non ethical things uh, the end result may i i may have a beautiful body for this particular moment but in a long term that is not going to be sustainable so what happens is that if you are not going to have ahimsa you are not going to have a sustainable yogic life you are not going to have a sustainable body you are not going to have a sustainable mind you are not going to have a sustainable knowledge so ahimsa is the base on which the whole structure of yoga we are not even going to the level of spirituality because spirituality is in a different level even to the level of going to the bodily if you are if your focus is only to have a good body then also you need the ethics of ahimsa the ethics of non violence the ethics of kindness to ourselves to others non humans and also non living things so these are the four steps that we will be going through in this in this in this evening because it is important it is imperative that if i am going to be kind if i am going to be non violent it is not only with another human because uh, yeah because when we wanted to be non violent we always think that okay i am not hurting somebody else but are we hurting any other animals are we hurting some non living things for example so a lot of things considered when we are we are we are when we are talking about the uh, ethics of ahimsa so that is why it is given the base it is like the plain canvas that we that we needed to first prepare ourselves from on which we can want it whatever we want to paint will come later so there are other uh, other levels of uh, there are other yamas there are five more uh, in total five yamas and five niyamas so everything else adds from the basis of this canvas without this if we are not going to be if we are not going to understand the concept of non violence if we are not going to understand the concept of kindness whatever you are doing with your body will not become sustainable since coming from a corporate background i for me it's always about sustainability of something because uh, i wanted to go in a crash diet okay i go for 21 days crash diet okay i reduce whatever kilos and then what is the point you end up doing the x y z and then you are gaining back all the weight or whatever 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 is going to happen but if you are going to do the same with kindness to your body and you are going to listen to your body then you are going to change something in you then it becomes more sustainable so that it may take long time but you will arrive there and you will arrive there happily because the end of the yoga is 
perpetual bliss is in a state of being happy yeah because if you are not going to be happy if the end purpose is not going to be happy then what is the point of doing anything in life what is the point of taking time to listen to a podcast or going to ever going to yoga class or going for a walk because at every point we want happiness we want this bliss we want this um, we want the state of excitement for that to happen we need to have this base so always remember ahimsa is the canvas on which we are going to paint our life being coming from india you know uh, one of the important um, person who uh, who is uh, who is famous around the world for ahimsa is our gandhi uh, mahatma gandhi so um, he has he has practically proved how ahimsa is a, is one of the greatest tool that we that we have because for being a, for being an ahimsa i really don't need anything for being non violent i really don't need anything for being kind i really don't need anything all i need is myself if i have myself i can be kind it's as simple as that you really don't need anything else to do anything more so this is that it's it's so basic it's like it's like uh, if you have a human body if you have a human heart if you have a human soul you need to be ahimsa you need to have ahimsa as part of this one because uh, he defines the only the first step a man comes from its uh, he uh, this is what he says um becoming divine becoming a man the first step is to eliminate the beastly nature yeah. and the beastly natures are brutality and cruelty so we are if uh, what are beasts we are either brutal we, we are having the brute force or we are cruel we are we are, we are creating this cruelty yeah so um, ahimsa is the only way we can eradicate this brutality and cruelty in the mankind and that is when a man is born so ahimsa is the first step that enables a man to become a human being that from that point onwards whatever you want to do with your body whatever you want to do with your mind whatever you would want to do with your soul you wanted to uh, get nirvana you wanted to achieve something else it's completely there first step from becoming from being an animal we have to come to the level of human because i have a human body because i have the faculties of human body does not make me human i could i'm a beast we are all animals from that animalistic nature the first level that the only step the efficient step that allows us to become human is to be uh, is to be non violent is to have the sense of ahimsa the virtue of ahimsa this is the i have virtue that kills my brutality that kills my cruelty yeah this is um, so ahimsa is like the base on which everything else is built so we are going to um, because also it is it has a bit of a negative annotation it's like mm, i think uh, if i wanted to show other uh, somebody hits me one one because it is one uh, um, one cheek i show the other cheek so that that kind of um, considered like um it's 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 not considered like very well uh, for in the modern times because um uh because um be, because of various reasons because we are always in a, we are in a time where violence is more 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 uh, more dramatic violence is more selling point and and uh, you know all the movies all the things that you see it's always about violence 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 and then and then you talk about like just to become human you need to be non violent that you need to be kind is something very radical and this is why we are we are we are, we are an independent country because of this change in the perception change in how you look at things instead of going to um, instead of going to uh, going to uh, following the same like okay if um, if some bird somebody is going to rule with uh, guns we are going to come go back and rule them with guns so in that case uh, mahatma gandhi uh, i think not mahatma gandhi some other gentleman's favorite quote is an eye for an eye uh, creates an a uh, world of uh, uh, blind people so this is exactly what uh, what violence brings us up. so if you are going to indulge in a society if you are going to indulge in a body of complete violence for ourselves then what happens is that we are we are we are we are not achieving our target of bliss but we are in a constant state of war 
war with ourselves and war with other people and, and the whole world and I fun and I so it's a it's a it's a something that you really needed to figure this out ahimsa is like the base I, I'm I'm repeating the same again and again because nice things needs to be repeated and also ahimsa is something that needs to be practiced every moment because we are going to when we are talking about ahimsa we are what the first person that we need to be non-violent first person that we need to be kind is our own self and then this overflows automatically into our neighbors this overflows automatically into our neighboring states it overflows to the whole world so the the concept of ahimsa the concept of non-violence is self it begins with the self that is it starts uh, with the self and its end in the self if the world is the if the world the, the whole world is going to be non-violent if the whole world is going to be kind we are going to be around kind people so that means that we we don't really have anything to be non-violent about so it comes into in, in the full circle so uh, repeating and uh, re recognizing where where and how we are going to uh, be kind where we are going to be non-violent is is what uh this whole the whole conversation is about i think now, in nowadays now we have non-violent communication nyc's and other and the, the non-violent communication the most important outcome of a non-violent communication is is a manifestation of what you think from from your heart not from what your mind so we uh ahimsa many allows us to manifest it creates a place of tranquility if i'm going to be if for example ahimsa non-violence if i'm going to be kind uh, people say we create an aura of peace around us. So anybody who comes in that aura, they become creative. To become anybody to become creative, the first important thing is that there is no violence. There is no. There is. Uh, there is absolute. Um, there is absolute tranquility. So that is when we switch from the flight and flee mode into the state of creativity, into the state of tranquility, into the state we will be in a position to receive, where we will be in a position to recreate, um, recreate recharge. Yeah. So uh, yoga as in a, an asana practice, for example, if you are practicing asanas or if you are doing 10 minutes of meditation, for example, this tranquility comes to us. We are in non-violent with anybody else. Because it is not like when we talk about non-violent, when we are talking about this, it's not like I have to physically arm somebody. I just have to think. For example, if I really don't like somebody, so I'm thinking something about them. What happens is that the person is not going to get affected, but I get affected because our blood, our, our body starts to create all the hormones that is not that is not needed for that yeah so we are always in a flight or flee mode we are always in a sympathetic nervous system so i get tensed i get uh, i get um, adrenaline is, uh, is rising up my digestion stops so we, all this leads to sickness back to me so in a in a yogic tradition we are thinking about going to a place where there is no illness and the illness doesn't start outside and the illness always starts perpetuates and ends in our own body so that yeah, for that illness to cure the first thing that we have to do is stop being violent to our own self stop being violent because we uh, we we bring ourselves to such we we compare ourselves to such um, such uh, such incomparable places because I like that like jealousy for example all this one creates illness inside of our body because we are we are we wanted to achieve XYZ there is a difference between achieving what is possible for you to achieve and to have something which is impossible for us to achieve yeah so when we are creating uh, because society puts us in a place um, um, uh, in a in a in a in a in a day-to-day -day situation we are not violent we are we are really violent with ourselves and with others we wanted to yell at anybody when we are stuck in a traffic we are yelling at everybody what is the point there is really no point in in getting getting violent in a in a traffic jump traffic jam is there the traffic jam is there so what happens is that uh, we are we are because of that one our uh, the mental tranquility the calmness that we wanted to work on dis disintegrates from uh, from us so ahimsa is not as i was mentioning it is not caused only by our physical action 
ahimsa is caused we 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 create we are creating violence to people uh, uh, sorry uh, imsa ahimsa is non violence imsa like we are we are making people to suffer not only with our our physical physical actions we also make people to suffer by, uh, through our thoughts our words our deeds one wrong look can can uh, can can uh, can ruin an entire person's day so basically what we are doing we are we are we are uh, we are creating a violence we are we are not being ahimsa to them we are not being kind to them we are we are creating we are we are creating havoc maybe sometimes without even us knowing because we really we are in a place where we are thinking okay this is okay i i when you ask this person i the person will tell no i did this for joke or i i i, I didn't mean meant anything but the person who was received the person who was received the look the person who was received the comment the person who was done he he or she is in the whole day is ruined for them and uh, so what happens is that so even by by this look even the your body language even the way you speak even a small sentence uh, uh, even the deeds that you are doing everything has to align with what you are thinking your intention is to be happy if you want to be happy the best way trust me is to is to make everybody else around you happy you cannot make everybody else tense you cannot yell at everybody and you think that oh, okay that will going to i'm going to be happy in that situation that is not going to happen the best way to do to become happy is to create a, a happy place around us and for that this kindness the non violence that we are we are we are we are we are perpetuating from our end will help us uh in um, in uh, in uh, patanjali's yoga sutra so it's like a short up up horizons that um, saint patanjali uh, has wrote uh, based upon which the entire the new uh, the entire uh, yoga yogic tradition is based the yoga darshan we call this uh, one separate school of hindu philosophy uh, is based on this um, uh, gentleman's um, aphorisms let's say 2000 2500 years it was written down uh, of course time in india means nothing to us <laughs> as in it could be 2000 it could be 1500 uh, because uh, yeah time has a very relative context here yeah uh so uh, he uh, he um uh, he talks about how ahimsa the non violence the kindness brings us a peace the end of ahimsa the end of non violence is peace this is how he finishes yeah why we have to practice ahimsa why we have to practice uh, non violence is we want to be peaceful as simple as that with peace you will find happiness it's the next step so the the direct result the end result of a non violent practice is peace as simple as that if for example if there is, if i'm if, if somebody is is creating a havoc you can get you can get tensed and you can alert them you will you can throw stones at them or throw stone book at them that is it, it is going to only fuel the fire but if you are going to be like okay what is the problem let's let's come let's sit down and talk let's let's see what where what is the problem so if you are going to go to that when what is going to be the end result of such a conversation is the person is going to become peaceful because he is peaceful you are going to gain back your peace your mental peace your physical peace and this is this peace is going to be imagine in this restaurant and somebody is creating a havoc since you established peace between you two you can your the, the entire um, restaurant or the place becomes peaceful it i'm talking about the restaurant it could be the the same as a workplace so by creating uh, by becoming non violent by becoming kind to others we create a space of peacefulness peace is the result of non violence this is what patanjali's yoga sutra patanjali yoga sutra describes about uh, p- um, uh, ahimsa it does, he doesn't mentions what is ahimsa what is ahimsa because what is ahimsa what is ahimsa uh, somebody says that okay non killing of animals is ahimsa for example and somebody will say non killing of uh, humans or uh, ahimsa and somebody will say something else is ahimsa but how we know if you are if you are if you are a soldier if you are if you are there is if you are there in the in the in the war zone killing of people means um, means violence uh, violence that is mean that you are not going to kill and you are going to let the enemy take over your country no and then same happens 
same happens to the vegetarian vegan food vegetarian food and other kind of food uh, if you are going to be an uh, eskimo living in a, living in uh, alaska there you cannot grow with vegan food because it is next to impossible there what is ahimsa what is ahimsa that is one because uh, so ahimsa becomes what happens is that ahimsa becomes something very 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 subjective uh, although the objective is easier it is to create peace to create this peaceful environment so ahimsa becomes a subjective experience this is when ahimsa is completely wrongly interpreted yeah so um, uh, when you are a soldier you have to do your job the the action the power of action what you are supposed to do you are supposed to do that if that is means that you are going to you are going to uh, fire at your enemy you have to fire at your enemy there is no compassion there is no kindness that is not violent this is what um, so what patanjali has mentioned he has not mentioned uh, he has not taken time to tell us what is ahimsa what is included in this and what is excluded in this he said whatever brings peace whatever gives the sense of peace to us is ahimsa is non violence is kindness this is how he finishes and which i find it very interesting because there are i come from a vegetarian background that means that we 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 eat i i eat ghee yogurt and honey and other other animal products but i know where the animal is grown i have seen this calf and uh, this calf is getting her is or her share of milk and and i uh, i get some share of the milk and i know what is what is coming from there in that way i don't feel this um, this uh, this um, i don't feel uh, pressured to follow veganism because and if you are living in a european or a, or a western world for example and the animals are transported from one end from australia it is transported all the way to western world and these animals goes through a lot of uh, a lot of problems during the life uh, tra transfer then then the word ahimsa is uh, then the word veganism is changing the world as as we know it so this my preaching is not for you to become a vegan or not to become a meat eater what you are supposed to do i think in my uh, in my one of our previous uh, discussions we were talking about food we are supposed to eat local we are supposed to eat seasonal in that way i am not creating violence even to my body for example i cannot digest um, i cannot digest meat at all because i am not designed to uh, eat meat so I, if i am going to eat meat i am putting my body i am i am creating so much violence for to myself why will i do it because we have so much vegetables so much green so much thing all through the year because the day here it's completely sunny 365 days we have amazing monsoons so we hear abundance in vegetarian is there so this is going to be my reality so so what is ahimsa for somebody it doesn't makes ahimsa for me what is ahimsa for somebody what is violent for somebody is not the same for me so every moment we have to think whether this action this thing that we are going to, i am doing i am doing is going to bring peace to myself and to others and this others doesn't mean only living organisms imagine you are walking through a building and then you say okay nobody is going to look i i take a, a hammer and i i chip the glass for example what is the point there is no point that you should you should you should break something because that is basically creating violent against something like everything around this we call everything is brahman everything is god the word god is uh, uh, if you, uh, uh, not in the in the in the in a in a religious kind of way everything is manifestation of brahman so if you want to be non violent you should be non violent against non living things also if a building is constructed if you find a chair or if you find something that is that is not living it is not going to make any difference you should not destruct it if unless otherwise you are in a, you are a recycling plant that is when the context changes in a recycling plant yes they are supposed to break and do something else but i am not going to take a hammer and break the all the buildings or break the mirrors of all the cars that i'm going to say that 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 is when it becomes an expression of violent behavior inside of you because you are not you are not knowing you always think that violence always means some human beings or some uh, living beings why non violence goes to the level of you should not be violent even to the materialistic nature even to a stone 
uh, yeah, like a, we call this a manurunda. So that means that you, if you go to a beach, the beach kind of creates um, creates a level of um, layer of sand. If you just walk next to this, the 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 sand will break and lose its texture. And uh, in one poem, in one poem, they uh, one of our um, uh, one of our uh, poet says, "Oh, I I when I'm walking uh, around this beach." the 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 sand breaks its breaks its um, breaks its structure and god is losing his image because he sees god in that particular image and imagine he is walking he is losing this image the whole sculpture of this god is is breaking down so i am creating such a violence to a violent violence to this um, sand so this is this is this is in a in a poetic way we should not take it uh, we should not take it in the in in the, in, the, in the surface level but if you go deeper we should not create harm even to things which is which is dead which is uh, which is which doesn't have which we assume that they, they don't have life of their own um, yeah so um, ahimsa is um, is is the highest dharma if you look at our traditions in most of the eastern traditions most of the western traditions creating uh, uh, being kind being compassionate is considered the highest virtue the highest dharma ever and being non-violent is not a child's play a person to be non-violent because anybody can can take the gun and shoot anybody but not but to but to have the control of your emotions your thoughts whatever the outside world is pushing you through but to have this control is not a child's play and the most strongest man and woman will have the virtue which is impossible for anybody to corrupt is this concept of non-violence and kindness compassion if because if if somebody if i don't like somebody they come and yell at me what i do i give my time to them i they they yell at me and then they go and then for the next two and a half hours like let's say next 10 hours i plan revenge in my mind i plan revenge in my mind i plan uh, this is what i will do next time this is what i will do next time so you keep working on this um, a kind of i'm just using the word revenge plan you can create create, uh, create uh, stories in your mind as if it is the truth so what you are doing you are creating so much changes in your body chemical you are creating so much violence for yourself and for the others so, so yeah, anybody so what you do you go and take a gun or take a machete and then you go slash or or throw a stone in their in their car or through their building everybody can do this everybody has a possibility to yell at everybody everybody has a possibility to be bad to everybody this is given but to show compassion to show kindness to show non violent to show ahimsa needs a such strong character and will that is why it is given the base so not it's a child play Every, people needs tremendous 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 work and focus so that they can be uh, so that they can achieve the state of non violent in a in a in a consistent manner um for example i oh, i wanted to show compassion to people i want to show kindness to people okay i will show compassion it once in a year people will people will be like okay next time if something needs to be done they will not come to you because they they don't know what you are you are going to be nice to them or you are not going to be as not nice as in you are going to be not violent violent to them or non violent to them so it becomes confusion so the con practice of consistency again this creates the base for the asana or uh, pranayama pratyahara because everything is about practice 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 of uh, how Uh, we we as we were discussing some of us some of us uh, have the luxury for example i live in this part of uh, india where we have never seen war since 1000 years the last war we officially had was like really 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 a long time ago and then if you go to north india because of so many invasions and so many changes that has politically happened there were constant invasions forever so basically they were having a war every 50 years once they go into war with something now we are having problems with pakistan previously it was um, something else so everything is changed so in the same country two different regions we 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 see ahimsa and ahimsa in a two completely different way and this is shown in our culture if you come to south everything is tranquil shanti 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 and then if you go in north 
everything is always bit politically uh, politically changing so what does that mean what is that means that what is non violence for them and what is non violence for me are completely different measure there if you look at our um, if, if you look at our army people uh, percentage most of the people are from this from the north and we have a very small people from the south because we really not seen war ever nothing has changed the world war 1 to nothing has come to us and really really we are protected and that's why our tradition we were well in a position to to have this traditions thousands of years old handed down to us in a pristine form and that is why we were in a position to bring this out to everybody else because we are we are in the state of tranquility we are in the state of non violence we are in the state of kindness so we were we are always in a state of creativity we, are, we will be in a position to give more um and this is an example yeah there, uh, there are many many example many such ways uh that we are uh, that we are bringing this uh, highest dharma to our 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 own life and to the life of the countries and the states and and our neighbors uh, ahimsa non violence is the greatest friend that you can have for example you know somebody who is always lovely compassionate if you really look at them like somebody who is you you can always talk to if you have a problem like you are really having a problem you can go to this person and you can talk to them and you know that the first thing that they will be like they're not going to be like Psh! they're not going to do that they're going to first listen and they're going to be like okay let's see what what has happened so let's let's look at this in a subjective and an objective environment and this and the person who is doing this if you see they exhibit the highest sense of non violence communication they will be they will be in a position to receive your message for what it is not what it would have been in their mind so a person uh, ahimsa non violence brings us the best friendship ever yeah so if you wanted to create a uh, uh, um, create an environment where you wanted to have many friends where you wanted to have uh, loving people around you where you wanted to have peace around you you start becoming you start uh, exhibiting ahimsa in your words actions and deeds yeah so ahimsa give, makes us the greatest friend the greatest uh, thing uh, ahimsa the the concept of non violent as i was mentioning develops will power as it was mentioning anybody can can th take a throw a stone and throw at uh, anybody's car this is given for anybody but to restrain ourselves from doing that not because we are we, we will be taken by the police not because we feel that we, when we are when we are hurting the person or we are hurting the car we are we are creating violent we are becoming violent the, nothing is changed outside of them everything inside of us is changed when we were able to establish this connection what happens is that our will power our power to resist the the thoughts that is not good for us that is not inconsistent with who we are becomes becomes uh, it, uh, develops quickly and so ahimsa the concept of non violence being kind to others improves our will power um, and also and also because we are not going to fight with anybody what naturally happens is that people will be less hostile to us and we are going to have less enemies so if you uh, that leads us again to the previous concept of more friends when you have more friends less enemies more peace so everything leads down to this single word of peace and to if you have peace as the base if you have ahimsa as the base you can create wonders from that yeah so again uh, we are going to uh, go from there uh, there are two things uh, that i would uh, talk and then we will um, we will um, um, we will uh, we will try to come to the end of this discussion is ahimsa non violence kindness means not it doesn't mean we are covert we are not we are not showing cowardice to others because when we when we talk about ahimsa no if somebody is going to hurt me should i should i just ask them to punch me and then or i should not do anything against against them that is not true because the end of ahimsa is happiness if something is going to going to make you and your environment and your people suffer you have to take what you are supposed to do but you can also do this in a very uh, non violent way this is what happened when gandhi 
uh, how we got freedom because we were we are we were being under under somebody's rule and uh, we were we have been yeah pressured pre we have been suppressed uh, by 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 the rules rules and the rulers and what we would have done we would have we could have all um, gotten a gotten a machete or 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 a gun and we would have we would have fought it would have been a bloody war of course we would have achieved independence because that's that is kind of imperative at some point um, the ruler has to change it it would be this or anybody else so the the end result is already there but we did it without shedding we we lost some lives but we did it in the most 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 uh, uh, appreciable most uh, more most uh, um, uh, reward as in I, I'm not able to find the word in the most coco no in the most best way because we were not able to uh, we, we didn't we didn't manage to we, we didn't manage to uh, we, we managed to find independence in the most uh, non-violent way and uh, following us there are other countries there are other people who got inspired and we in, we, in turn we were able to think so ahimsa non-violence was not a cowardice it was the best instrument that we were we were having and we achieved independence with almost zero bloodshed yeah so in that way Ahimsa, we always think that uh, means doesn't mean that we are we are going to only we are going to be covered that if somebody is going to hurt us we are going to we are going to become be hurt that is not true it's the other way around we are going to overcome that problem in the most sattvic way in the most uh, non-violent way yeah and uh, uh, again uh, one another topic that is um, that is misinterpreted when it comes to ahimsa is that we always we should not kill animals we should not kill people we should not kill uh, other kind of things even uh, Ga mahatma gandhi has asked to euthanize um, a, a, a calf which was suffering beyond 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 recovery so ahimsa doesn't mean ahimsa means end suffering there should not be a suffering it, the suffering has to be end in one way or other, either by giving a treatment or going to other things. So we are um, we uh, sometimes we have to agree that there are going to be certain things which is not going to be normal, like a capital punishment for a for a child molester. It is needs to be done then and there. There is no there, there should not be compassion. There there the concept of ahimsa is completely different. The concept of ahimsa there comes from the perspective of a victim, perspective not from the perspective of a perceptor. So uh, there are a few things that that uh, that that is okay, uh, like uh, culturally, socially, which is which is not norm, is agreeable when it comes to ahimsa. So that means that we should we should make the end purpose, the end result matters more than the uh, than the than the process uh, the, than the beginning. What is if okay from today onwards I will be non-violent to others I will be non-violent to myself so I understand all of this bala so I understand this completely but how this is going to improve the quality of my life so that is the that is the end question that we will ask answer first we are creating an aura of peace around us people will like to look in our eyes and see okay this guy let's talk to him there is a possibility that we can talk to him and try to create a solution for this guy yeah so when you create this aura of peace everything else will fall in place for you 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 want to be healthy you will be healthy you want to be happy you want to be happy you you are not jealous because you know that you're not going to be you're not going i'm not going to compare myself for example just a odd thing that in the Indian does or people with with uh, with my complexion does they put a lot of cream for example just to bleach their face so that they will look white for example this is um, it's a trillion dollar industry in India for example so uh, what they're really really what they're really doing is that they're doing such violence to their body there's such violence to their to their skin but if i'm going to have the p i'm peace with my skin color this is the best skin color that ever happened to me trust me when i'm peace with myself when i'm able to peace 
I really don't want to put any color. I don't want to agree to what people say. If you, they, if you, if they call me dark, I can say there yes. If they call me chocolate brown, I say yes. If they, if they call me white, I can I agree to that one. So everything becomes acceptable for me, and and then I'm in, I'm not in conflict with anybody. I'm not making myself suffer. I'm not making anybody suffer, and I'm not comparing myself with anybody else. So once you stop comparing, what happens is that perpetual bliss. I'm in constant state of happiness. Somebody calls me chocolate brown. I said chocolate brown, 80 percentage cacao. And somebody tells me that you, I'm, uh, I'm black. I said black. <laughs> this is what you go. So everything becomes an, an, an uh, it becomes acceptable, and then it, we go from there. And ahimsa makes me strong by being compassionate even to our own enemy. When one, when somebody slaps your one cheek, show the um, other one how much compassion that we we are developing for others, for other and ourselves. So when we are in a position to show this compassion to others, maybe thousand people will slap you, but thousand one one person will be like, wow, there is something that I wanted to learn from this man. Something is physically we are the, we are changing somebody's minds and thoughts and actions. So this is how you change the world. You are not going to change the world because I'm a Jesus Christ. Okay, I will change the world. I take my wand. I will go abracadabra or whatever. This is not going to happen. He, uh, Jesus Christ, changed the world by example, by being compassionate, by being non-violent, by being, um, uh, by being, by being himself. So this is how we are going to change. So ahimsa brings us this possibility, gives us this seed, gives us this. Uh, this uh, magic wand to change others also. The last thing Ahimsa teaches us, non-violence teaches us, is the power of letting go. When uh, when we talk about Ahimsa, we always think that because we, we are not bothered by anybody else's uh, thoughts, we are not bothered by anybody else's uh, reactions. We, uh, we are not we are not bothered by 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 outside agencies outside faculties what happens because i'm inside i'm tranquil the outside that is a tempest you're changing everything but if i'm going to be calm tranquil i'm going to be kind to myself inside the outside world ceases to do any actions on my on on my body so this allows me if something comes today something comes today if something is not coming today something is not coming today something has to go from my 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 myself something has to go from myself in that way the power of letting go develops in us and like every other faculty this i'm going to repeat again and again and again because this is the thing which you can always repeat everything comes with a practice being ahimsa being uh, uh, non-violent being kind being a yogi being uh, a computer engineer being a driver being a ma ma mother being a father being a dog everything comes with practice 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 so everything we I, I'm, I'm not born as a yogi teacher as i was mentioning i had a completely different career and i'm training myself every day i wake up and i'm i'm spending three to five hours working on my physical body so that i experience everything in my body so that i will be in a position to transmit that knowledge if i'm going to be violent to myself i said okay i wanted to do something i wanted to do headstand for example everybody goes wants to do headstand i don't really see the purpose of it because it's very easy to do gain the benefits of a headstand so i push myself and then i i do anything and then i i i fall back and then i break my back so what i'm doing instead of having the joy of doing an asana I end up if I'm not being if I'm not having non-violence with myself if I'm not kind with my physical body I end up hurting it I go back 50 times back instead of going one step forward so Ahimsa um, uh, forms the base of letting go as in because I'm not having any target because one day is one day. Every day I keep changing. Today I was no, I'm in I'm in a position to do headstand and tomorrow I'm not in a position to do headstand. What we can do, nothing can be done. So instead of pushing myself and hurting myself, I'm letting go of the headstand today. Okay, today for some reason this is not happening for me. Tomorrow I will try. So what and then I will study my body or I will study about, I will go to a teacher or something like that, and then I gain the knowledge of how to do things. So I step back 
I let go of my ambi uh, not not an ambition I let go of a target because the target is not achievable because if I have to achieve the target I have to hurt myself so I go back I take a breath and I see I uh, I create um, I create a level of friendship with the headstand I create friendship with my yoga teacher I create friendship with my wall and then from there I work from there yeah so these are the uh, basics why these are these are the inputs that I would want to bring to us when you are practicing yoga even the physical form it is not only yoga it could be swimming it could be cycling it could be anything don't pushing our body don't push our body to the limits don't push our mind to the limits because once you push it's we have we, we gained few things over a year let's say because of our so our because we have been sitting um, let's say you developed a kind of an injury in your lower back it has developed over a period of x a x amount of years or x amount of days you are not going to recover go back to how you were 15 years ago by doing one asana class or five asana classes everything takes time everything and you're going to arrive there by being non-violent by being compassionate to yourself by being kind to yourself so this is when you show start showing kindness to yourself once you train yourself to start showing kindness to yourself it's very easy to show it to others if you don't show compassion to yourself trust me it is next to impossible to feel that compassion and show that compassion to others uh, yeah so this is what um, i wanted i was thinking uh, thinking um, uh, th that i will i will finish um, this conversation uh, uh, i one another few things that uh, that is that is there is uh, ahimsa non violence can only only happen when we become fearless when we become limitless when we are limited when we are fearing something fearing of losing something fearing of becoming something fearing of do uh, for uh, of an action we are not we are going to be we are not we are going to be against our own inner self let's say i have a potential to to have a conversation like something like this but uh, I, uh, I have this fear okay I don't want to I know that I can speak uh, maybe a bit slower but I'm working on this as the time progresses but uh, if I if that I'm not working on this fear uh, this end result is not going to happen this, I'm going to be this is not going to be there so I'm what I'm going to do so first to become uh, non-violent I have to become less fear I'm not okay if what what is the maximum I can do I'm going to be a bit faster and people are going to ask me to correct okay this I yeah okay this I can do so in that way I'm becoming non-violent to myself I'm not holding on to something that I wanted to say just because of the fear of being wrong so in that way you start experiencing many new things in your life you you experience new asanas you experiencing new uh, paragliding for example uh, if you if you are going to be uh, if, if you wanted to have new experiences you have to go through uh, go through your fear you have to let go of your fear once this fear the the fear you can only let go through ahimsa and ahimsa goes let goes of the um, so it's like a it's the same side coin but from two with that so at the end the end purpose of being non-violent is to be in peace with yourself and through peace we are creating friendship around us and among us and through this friendship and through peace we are achieving happiness which is the end